Ladies, gentlemen, I am the greatest of the greatest, the best of the best, and that is myself, and my name is Josh Samuel. Thank you all so much once again for tuning in. And on the line with me, ladies and gentlemen, is a brother by the name of Sean. And since he's new to the channel, I'll allow him to introduce himself, shout out his channel as well, uh, and let everybody know where he's from. Uh, go ahead, brother Sean. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, hello, everyone. Yeah, I have a, I have a YouTube channel myself. I only started last month, and just I just like having a bit of fun on it, just tweeting or putting videos about DC and just movie reviews. It's called Movies That Matter with with the Viking. So, yeah, people say I look like a Viking because I've got a beard and a lot of hair and stuff. So that's what they used to call me in school. So that's why I have it in that. And also, <laughs> my I have a Twitter account as well. It's just at moviebuff100. So yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Now, Brother Sean, man, the reason I had you on, man, is uh, I we both follow each other on Twitter. And, uh, you know, I've been seeing a lot of the things you've been posting. And you've, uh, as well as my brother friend, shout out to him, have been on a tear, so to speak. You said some things that, you know, people agree with. And you said some things that people may not always agree with. But it's very clear that you stick to your guns and you stick by your opinion. Let's start out with the main thing, man. What was your experience like first seeing Man of Steel and Batman v Superman? Yeah, well, I, I didn't see Man of Steel until about two years after it came out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see it in cinemas because at the time I wasn't that big into films like I, I watched films and stuff but I didn't go to the cinema every week and I wasn't a, a big movie goer so I call it on TV and the first time I watched Man of Steel to be honest confused by it because it's different from any other film or film I've seen because the action the way it is, is very different very fast paced mm -hmm. and also I was never a big fan of, of Superman I never got into the character at all right. I just thought in a way he was he was too perfect you know so I seen Man of Steel the first time, I thought it was okay. Then I caught it again, and I liked it a little bit more. Then I caught it again, and I liked it even more. Mm -hmm. And then I was about the fourth or fifth time, I was like, you know what, this film is great. And I, my opinion on uh, Man of Steel right now, I think is a masterpiece of a film. Mm -hmm. I, I watched it more than any other DC, uh, DC film, or maybe even superhero film, and I just love Man of Steel so much. Just like, I was watching it the other day again, and there's just there's little bits that you just miss every time and you catch them and it's a new experience you know right but then to the build up when 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 Zach announced that they were going to do Batman versus Superman that's when kind of my excitement levels got even higher because I am a huge Batman fan mm -hmm. I just love Batman he's my favorite character my favorite hero the Joker is my favorite villain but I was so excited for Batman versus Superman and I was like every day on Facebook or Twitter or the internet just looking up to see if there's any more images released or what the news was on the film mm -hmm. uh, and then the trailers were re released then as well so I watched them over and over again and then opening night I went to go see Batman for Superman and the, the cinema was packed I went with my friend and I absolutely loved it so much mm -hmm. I had such a good time with it and I, 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 I loved it so much I went and seen it then later again that night you know so I think ba I think Man of Steel is a masterpiece and I think Batman for Superman is a magnificent film Got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. Man, what's, uh, when you say masterpiece, a lot of people think, you know, oh, he's just exaggerating, oh, he doesn't mean that. Tell me some of the favorite, tell the audience, uh, because you don't got to prove it to me, I, I can tell. Tell me some, uh, tell them some of the, fa your favorite aspects about, uh, Batman v Superman, for example, man. Yeah, um, uh, well, Oh, about for Superman, is it, or which one? Uh, the Ultimate Edition, for sure. For sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I, I caught the Ultimate Edition then a few months after when it came out then. Mm -hmm. And it was just, like, Batman vs. Superman, the film, it kind of, I loved it, but it cuts, it goes from scene to scene kind of quick enough. And then in the Ultimate Edition, the scenes are more brought out a bit, you know. There's more, there's more uh, breathing time with the characters. Yeah, you get to look at Clark a bit more, get to see his work as, uh, as like a journalist when he's going to learn more about Batman, and then you get to see a bit more with Lois Lane and what she does, mm -hmm. and a little bit more fleshed out with uh, Jesse Eisenberg's Lu Lu uh, Lex Luthor. So no, I think Batman vs Superman, the cinema edition, 
is more of an action-packed kind of uh, fanboy experience. You get to see Batman and Superman and all that. But then the Ultimate Edition kind of feels more like a feels more like kind of like a film. You know, there's more depth, there's more character development in in the Ultimate Edition. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Now, obviously, brother uh, Sean, we're gonna get to some uh, controversy now. We know that um, during this time period, there DC had its own sort of slate. Uh, there were release dates for movie set. Uh, chief among them, Cyborg was set to release this year. Um, yep. Shout out to Ray Fisher. Then plans started changing, and WB, as I like to put it, started panicking. Uh, shout out to Bane and Tom Hardy. Started panicking. And they not only uh, ha- tampered with Suicide Squad, shout out to David Ayer, but they also tampered very, 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 very awfully, awful, in a, in a very awful way with uh, Justice League. Now, before we talk about that, man, tell me about your hype for Justice League when you realized that Zack Snyder was going to be helming uh, what was initially Justice League Part 1 and Part 2 yeah well when Batman vs Superman came out of course there was a lot of controversy and a lot of negativity towards the film with bloggers and YouTube channels and all that right but I thought average audiences enjoyed it and it, it made good money and I thought it was a good build up towards uh, Justice League mm-hmm. so I was very excited and then I was kind of happy as well that Justice League started shooting a month after Batman vs Superman came out because then Warner Brothers couldn't get rid of Zack, you know what I mean? So right. they, couldn't, they couldn't fire him because everyone was in place to shoot Justice League. Mm-hmm. So I was excited for Justice League and I thought we were going to get a full Zack Schneider experience and I thought he introduced Cyborg and Flash and Aquaman very good in, in BVS and I was just looking forward to it so much. And that first trailer that came out, yeah. it, felt like, it felt like a Zack Schneider film, but I also think Zack... He didn't uh, give in to the bloggers or the um, critics about his films being being too dark. Right. I think he he changed his um, his philosophy a bit because he had different characters like Ray Fisher uh, and Ezra Miller who are who are different characters from Batman and Superman. You know, they're a mo- bit more lighthearted a bit. Jason mm-hmm. Momoa's character like making jokes, which is fine. You know, so I thought we we're going to get that dark experience that Zach always has but also some humour that we haven't seen in Zach's films before mm-hmm. and I think his humour is very good because in Man of Steel and BVS there's a lot of humour you know exactly it's, just, it's not in your face exactly so yeah it's not thrown into your face and you don't have to laugh out loud and, and, and dissect the joke you know his jokes are little subtle things that people like you know when, when you're living your own life you're not there making these big massive jokes in people's faces you have little like Sly remarks or little digs and things like that, you know. So I thought we were going to get a very good film, and I was excited for it. Yeah, uh, yeah, we 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 all were, man. Um, now let's go back a little bit to Suicide Squad, man. Uh, now Suicide Squad was one I was really looking forward to. Uh, now yeah. we know that David Ayer. There was a lot of rumors surrounding the movie, especially after the Comic-Con trailer, after BVS, and with the reshoots. Now, we do know that David Ayer has been also on a a tear on Twitter of his own. He's been posting little hints and pictures that show that his Suicide Squad was indeed a lot different than what we saw in the theatrical cut, which to to his credit isn't the worst thing out there but it's clear that David had much bigger plans for this to tie into what Zack started uh, what did you think about Suicide Squad man well Josh do you remember that first Suicide Squad trailer came out and it was it was very dark yeah remember that trailer yes and I, was, I, was, I seen that trailer for the first time and I, and I was so excited and I was like wow this looks this looks badass and the Joker looks badass giving a little, little hint towards him and Will Smith with his cool little lines and Harley Quinn. And then the second trailer came out and it was a lot different. It was more music in it and it was more kind of, uh, it looked more fun. Yeah. So when Suicide came out, I went with my brother to go see it. And you know what? I had a really good, enjoyable time at it. Mm-hmm. I really like Suicide Squad. 
and I thought Will Smith was great in it. The only downfall that the Suicide Squad, in my opinion, had was there wasn't enough Jared Leto's Joker. Right. And the villain was was shit, you know? Yeah. It was a poor villain to have. And I remember a few months after uh, David Ayer did admit on Twitter, he said that he should have had Joker as the main villain in the film. Or main villain, or uh, villain, sorry. Right. And uh, I respect him for admitting that he made a mistake on that part, but Suicide Squad is one that I still watch and I enjoy. It's not perfect, but it's a good, fun film. There's some good, um, there's some good dialogue between the characters. I think what really stands to Suicide Squad is the chemistry between the cast. Yes, I agree. You know, so like I think that chemistry with the cast isn't isn't there. I think that's a that film turns out very bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Zach David Ayer is a very respected filmmaker. Uh, Will Smith only has good things to say about him. He's working. He's worked on that film, Netflix film, Bright, and they're working on another film together. So David Ayer creates a very good working environment, like Zach, for his his cast. Mm-hmm. So with all the reshoots that happened and cutting of Jared Leto's scenes, I think the chemistry is what kept that film together. And David Ayer, you know. So, but I hope we can see the the Ayer cut. I don't, like we don't even know how many scenes were deleted. Like Jared Leto, I remember said there's an entire movie of scenes of his that was deleted. So it just shows you. You think that uh, they don't have much time, the studios, to cut and change things up. Like look at Justice League. Look how much they changed there. So who's to say there's not an entirely different Suicide Squad film? Exactly. So I enjoyed Suicide Squad. I like it, but I I want to see the true version that was it depicted in the first trailer. Yeah, I completely completely agree and. It'd be amazing to not only get what we're getting with Zack Snyder's cut of Justice League, it would be amazing to get David Ayer's intended yeah. Suicide Squad uh, before the, what I like to call, jiggity funkity bibbity bop reshoots. Uh, <laughs> moving on, brother, let, let's let's talk about uh, the Snyder cut, and this is where things get a little testy. Now, when, you, when, when did you first decide, uh, Brother Sean, because... What many don't know is that you are the guy who tweeted hashtag release the Snyder Cut and it wasn't known to much later on. What inspired you to hashtag release the Snyder Cut and why have you stuck with it for so long, man? Yeah, well, I went to see Suicide Squad on the 17th of November when it came out. Uh, or, not, sorry, or Justice League, sorry. Yeah. And... Um, I seen it, and then when I first came out, I was like, okay, it was an okay film, there was some poor things in it, so initially what I thought was, it's not Zach's film, Josh Whedon was brought in, and he didn't have enough time to do whatever that he wanted to do, so it was, it was, it turned out, and then I was on Twitter, and I was talking with a few friends I had at the time on Twitter, and then people I still engage with now, and... Then we started talking, then we started looking at the first trailer and the second trailer, and we were saying, that scene's on the film, that scene's on the film, that scene looks done, why well, wasn't it in the film? So then, there was a few people, some people were saying, there's definitely a cut of Zack Snyder's Justice, Justice League, mm-hmm. uh, um, a guy called uh, Carlos Digital, that's his Twitter name, I don't, I don't know exactly what it is, but he, he was, a day before I tweeted the hashtag, he, he was like, Warner Brothers really need to, to release that Snyder cut. Mm-hmm. And then I think there was, similar like that and then I was the next day I was just on Twitter and I was I was engaging with people and I was like like he had a he had a Watchmen cut a director's cut he right. had a, a Batman vs Superman Ultimate Edition you know uh, there's there's a Sucker uh, soccer Punch um, director's cut too like who's to say there's not a director's cut of this just sleek film you know so, that, right. so then I said to myself, I just I don't know why I said it but then I called hashtag release the Schneider cut and then I didn't know at the time that it was going to be this entire movement or people were going to end up supporting it so much or there's going to be a big Twitter page like the Release the Schneider Club Twitter page that has over 20,000 followers and then all these other sub pages on Facebook and Twitter. I didn't never thought it was going to be like this. Mm-hmm. And I just I just tweeted that at the time and it, it caught on over time. At the start, it had a small enough following. And then Fiona was doing great work too. Mm-hmm. Uh, working with Zach and then she was promoting that there's another cut of Justice League and then it just caught on so like I was the first to tweet it I wasn't the first to 
saying it was a cut of the film because a lot of people had those assumptions at the time and so I'm just I, like I've said I'm just glad to have some sort of impact on the movement I, I, I still tweet about it two years on mm-hmm. uh, because I love Zack Snyder as a filmmaker I love his films and I want to see his true version of it so I, I will continue to support it I've done so over the last two years I, I don't be I haven't been involved with any making up events or anything like that like there's there's really great people that have done that you know mm-hmm. like Justice League posters that's being done or the the Subway sandwiches the things like that you know I haven't been involved with things like that those people do great work and it's it just shows how much uh, positivity can be spread throughout the movement when we work together yes yes <laughs> and Sean I'm glad you mentioned that brother um I'm going to be doing a video <laughs> And I know it's going to make people shift in their seats, but it's like I always say, it's okay. Talk to me uh, about, you know, people in, you know, who want to boycott DC movies, who want to, you know, kind of turn the other cheek, so to speak. This is me. You, I, you know what I'm talking about, putting it lightly. Uh, turn the yeah. other cheek when it comes to DC movies who, you know... Want to get reckless on Twitter when it comes to other DC movies. Um, Before I let you take the mic, brother, I've always said in my videos, and I will say this going forward. Um, if you want to boycott DC movies, uh, no one's going to stop you. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not here to say you're an idiot for boycotting DC movies. That's not what I'm here to do. Um, and yeah. that's the beauty of having an opinion you know they're all different if you choose to boycott DC movies uh, that's fine if you want to support DC movies and the Snyder Cut going forward that's also fine um, I don't think one or the other is necessarily bad I think when you cross certain lines and certain boundaries however that in itself can be a very terrible and bad thing uh, what's your thought on that man yeah, well, the thing about it is, film is subjective. Everyone has different opinions, and everyone's opinion should be respected. So, I don't like, I don't like, say, Avengers Endgame that came out this year. I, I like parts of it, but it's not as good as Infinity War. Right. But I've had a conversations with people, and I said I didn't like the film that much. And people have come and say and attacked and attacked me and said, "Oh, how could you not like it and stuff." I said, it's my opinion. I respect your opinion. I want to hear your views and why you like the film. I'll give you my views of why I didn't like the film. I think that's a good environment. Not everyone's like that, though. Not everyone wants to engage that way. But like, if, if you want to uh, boycott DC films, that's fine. I have no problem at all with that. But just don't put other people down that want to go see these films. Yeah. You know? Like, I went and seen Aquaman, and a lot of people were saying, don't go see Aquaman. I went and seen Aquaman, and I loved Aquaman. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, why? starve myself of having a good cinema experience with a film but just because that studio has done something that I don't agree with you know like there's different people who work on Aquaman that, that don't work with uh, Warner Brothers and their decision making so like I like Jason Momoa and I like James Wine so why would I go against them because of what their bosses did you know right so like if you if you, I have no problem with people saying I'm going to boycott DC films until they released the Schneider Cut. That's fine because DC did lie to us. They did give us false uh, advertisement with Justice League and people feel hurt and betrayed and that's their right to feel that way. But I don't think you should put other people's da- people down because they have a different opinion from you and they want to go see a film, you know? Like, if like, what's the last film you've seen in cinemas? Uh, probably... In cinemas, probably Rise of Skywalker. I was going to see Bad Boys 3, but yeah, the last one I saw was Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, so imagine if I said, and I wasn't a Star Wars fan, I was like, man, why did you go see a film? I'm never talking to you again. Like, I don't want to be friends with you. Why would you go see a Star Wars film? It was made by Disney, and they did this, that, and this, you know? Yeah. So, you know, and then, like, I don't talk to you again, and I call you names. It just doesn't make sense, you know? <laughs> best thing to do is like if I wasn't a Star Wars fan it's like oh really you went to go see Star Wars never really got into those films oh cool was it any good you know so like it just makes no sense to put people down because they went and seen a film right I, I, I don't understand it like even when people have 
um, an opinion on a film and people get so annoyed because they liked a certain film and then they end up calling them names and stuff yeah it's, just, it's not good like even there's there's even there is some people out there that went, went and seen Justice League the Josh Whedon film and liked it you know yeah they went and they, and they enjoyed it and maybe they have a DVD of it as well or a Blu-ray and they still watched the film and they enjoyed it and maybe they're not big uh, movie fans that like like us on Twitter who tweet about it every day or talk about movies every day. Maybe they're just an average movie fan, but they love that Justice League film. They don't know all the behind the scenes shit that happened. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, so like we have to, not everyone's a huge movie fan, so you have to respect that. You know, like like my my uh, like my like mother and father aren't huge movie fans, but they'd sit down and watch a film like Justice League and think there's nothing wrong with it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I don't just respect everyone. You know, I suppose like it's only it's only a movie at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's 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 just the movie. Um, nobody gets hurt by it, you know. Yeah, yeah, ex- exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm sure most of us uh, that I that I know, most of us that are tweeting the hashtag or making videos or donating to charity, which we'll talk about, most of us just want the same thing. We want to see. Zach's films uh, release, and we want to see uh, his, his, you know, his, him justice for him, and we also yeah. want to, you know, also let this hashtag myself really. I want to see this hashtag carry on like it has with a a David Ayer, with a Simon yeah. Kimberg, and with a Alita uh, Robert Rodriguez, so they can get a sequel, even though. They're sadly bound by Disney now. You know, I want to see this hashtag carry on, not just for uh, Justice League, but for director-driven films and creative freedom. Because, to me, that's important. And I saw a video, I can't remember who posted, uh, that Zach, you know, was talking about movies, the difference between movies made by directors and movies made by committee. And he said something like, movies made by committee are never good and they're never fun. And you know that's the difference. This was a movie, Justice Justice League. This was a movie that was made by you know Joss Whedon and Marvelized to try and get compensation, Avengers like compensation, and instead was a spit in the face to not only the fans but to all of Zack Snyder's hard work, all 214 minutes of it. And that's all in those regards, man. Um. Let's talk a little bit more about the Snyder Cut, man. Um, I think one more thing about that. Go ahead. I think it's. I think it's. If we ever do get the Snyder Cut, which I think we will, it shows a lot of power that the the fans can have over studios. You know. Yeah. So like you said, you, you want to see the the hashtag continue on. When that say when the Snyder Cut is released, the hashtag doesn't stop there. It's time to make a new hashtag about something else. Yeah. And like we, if we do, like I'm not saying that oh the power uh, the fans have all the power and all this. No, I'm just saying when when studios have done done directors or done actors hard done by, and the fans are passionate enough about it, then why can't we make another hashtag like release the air cut or yeah. release the Kimber cut or Alita Battle Angel two? Make those hashtags, you know. Yeah. So it shows the strength that the fan base can have. And I think it's great that there's so many people making um, YouTube channels about the Schneider cut. There's making uh, Instagram pages. There's so many out there: Facebook pages, Twitter pages, Vero pages. Uh, Tumblr, you know, yeah, I, it spreads the, the community so much, and we get to engage with so many other people and gain so much new followers. So when someone says on Twitter, "I'm going to make a Snyder Cut or DC uh, Instagram page," go ahead, that's good. You never know how big it's going to get, who it's going to reach, what followers you might get from it. You know, so exactly. even if you went on Instagram, it was on Instagram later on. If you type in "release the Snyder Cut" or "Snyder Cut." The amount of, of pages dedicated to it is unbelievable, and it's just great. And they all have good numbers of followers in the hundreds, and some of them have the thousands. So uh, keep doing it, everyone. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. I completely agree, man. And it's great. It's great to see so many people, like you said, everywhere just stepping in and lending their voice or lending their, in some cases, Twitter fingers to hashtag release the snyder hashtag release the snyder cut it's a beautiful thing and again like i try to mention as much as i can it's also great to see so many donate to uh charity man um yeah one thing i i that was pointed out to me by uh my brother who also saw justice league earlier they did not 
give any show any tribute to Zack Snyder or his family at the end of the movie. Yet they stamped the name, stamped his name on a movie that wasn't his, and that's just very, that's just very disheartening and disrespectful, in my opinion, man. After everything he's been through. Yeah, it, it was disrespectful because we all knew going into the film if you were a big DC fan that uh, the, trap, the, the terrible thing that happened and, and Zach had to leave and there should have been something there but you know maybe Zach didn't want it there because he knew it wasn't going to be his film so maybe when we get to see the Shadow Cut there will be a, a tribute in that form to yeah. his family you know so yeah. I, I think there will be and you know, it was disrespectful from Warner Brothers and then I forget which um I don't know which it was the president of the of Warner Brothers or CEO or someone that was an interview a few months before Justice League saying that nothing's going to be changed from Zack's vision uh, Joss is going to continue what Zack had intended and there's no new characters and it's just the, the Justice League film and like he lights straight to our faces you know yeah so disrespect towards the fans and disrespect towards Zack and the people that worked on the film and then they had to go and promote Justice League, the cast, and light to our faces as well. Like, I don't, nothing, nothing against the cast at all. They're all under contract. They have to say what they're told to say, you know? So, um, yeah, it's just, there was a lot of disrespect uh, uh, towards the fan base. And um, I think we're showing how much disrespect was shown, but we're doing it in a positive way towards Warner Brothers. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, man, were you, let me ask you this, man. Were you, um, I can't remember because there were so many people uh, joining in and there was so much happening at once. Were you uh, active on Twitter on November 17, 2019 when the yeah, the tweet the tweet uh, Twitter broke thanks to hashtag release the Snyder Cut? Yeah, I was... I, I uh, deliberately took the day off. <laughs> so I, was, I was just on my phone all day. Yeah, same, 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 same. No, I was, I was just, I knew we, um, the event was organized for that the two year anniversary, I don't know if it was released, uh, the released Twitter page that organized or, or who started at that time, but um, yeah, I was just, so I was just tweeting pictures from Zack Snyder's uh, all, all day and tweeting about it and talking with people, and then it all kicked off then later on that night, didn't it? Yeah, it was, it was crazy it was just crazy to see how that how that all turned out man it was beautiful too um i i, I was getting ready to go to bed because I, like when it's nighttime here it just be early enough for you are but right um i was getting ready to go to bed and then i seen that that zach had posted hashtag release the mm-hmm. and gal had done it or and then ben and ray you know <laughs> so yeah. it was just I, couldn't, I actually couldn't believe it. i thought someone had met up that had photoshopped it or did something I shouldn't believe that Zach actually said it right and then I was like I was getting my original tweet from 2017 and I was putting it over Zach's tweet and it just shows you how far we've come like just like me like as a nobody like mm. nobody knows who I am nobody like you know what I mean like Zach Snyder doesn't know who I am and I'm not imp- I'm not important because it's it's, it's it's everyone together who's important without everyone we wouldn't be anything right. it's just amazing how far just some fan who, who likes watching films tweets about it or someone says it in a sentence and then two years after you've got the director of the film using that saying or you got Batman himself saying it you know that was just pretty cool yeah yeah it is it was it was amazing man it was an amazing amazing day I did literally nothing else all day but just sit there on my phone you know going crazy let's talk let's speaking of Batman uh brother Sean man I want to talk a little bit about Superman, and then we'll t- touch on other characters as well. Um, now, as we know, the journey uh, started with Henry Cavill's Superman. Uh, he's seen a mixed response, uh, needless to say, uh, for some very, si- mostly very silly reasons, and uh, a lot of the lot of the reasoning just doesn't, to be fair, doesn't even make any sense. When you look at other superhero films that do the same thing and worse and never get critiqued. As a matter of fact, they get praised, but we're not here to talk about that. What's your opinion on uh, Henry Cavill as Superman, man? Yeah, well, as I said earlier on, I was never a big fan of uh, Superman until Man of Steel. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, Chris Reeves and Brandon Routh have done the character before and then um, the TV shows that have come. But right. I never got into it. Right. Um, so when I see Man of Steel, 
after a few times I got more into the character and in my opinion Henry Cavall is, is the best Superman of all time mm-hmm. um, I just think he, he just looks the part you know he's a huge guy <laughs> yeah. he looks the part he's a very good actor uh-huh. you, you've seen that in, in The Witcher if you've seen it he's very good at, at acting Yes. Um, he has that kind of uh, that presence on screen as well you know mm-hmm. he, he takes over the screen like we I've seen him in the Mission Impossible as well. Every scene he's in, he kind of steals because he's a big guy. You know, he takes up the whole screen. He uh, he's intimidating. He grabs your attention straight away. But I think he's he's very good at Superman. Like I was when I was watching Man of Steel the other day, his line delivery and you kind of you feel so much for his character in Man of Steel because he's been so been been through so much. He doesn't know exactly who he is. Mm. He's finding himself in this in this world, of, and he's he's an alien. But uh, no, Henry Cavill, I love him as Superman. Um, I love him as as uh, and I've seen him in interviews and stuff. I always lo- love hearing him talk. So no, I, I really like Henry Henry Cavill. Um, do you have the same opinion about him? Yeah, man, I I love completely love Henry Cavill as Superman, man. Um, not a knock to the the Supermans of the past, even though I no, no. even though I even though I sometimes joke on. Tyler Ho- Holchland, the current Superman on the CW. I, I sometimes, oh, I, I sometimes joke on him, but it's all love. But no, man, it, it, it's it's just amazing to see, you know, how how far this Superman, Henry Cavill Superman, has come as a character, and it's crazy to know that he was intended to go above and beyond with Justice League Part One and Part Two, and. Uh, just his journey, you know, being sent here as an alien to inspire hope in the way he does, it's just it's just amazing. And you know, scenes yeah. like the the scene in Man of Steel where he gets hit by that drunk goofball with the beer can and gets beer poured on him, and you know, seeing him not react, even though he could, seeing him not react, like stuff like that, just you know, gets me emotional. Even the scene where he's like younger and he's like the world is too big mom and she says we'll make it small yeah. like just little little moments like that make it a lot more the experience of superman a lot more special for me as an audience member and like you man to be honest i was never really into superman as much as i am now and that's thanks to henry cavill and Zack snyder and i know people say well he needs to smile more he needs to be more hopeful he needs to you know, save cats out of trees, he needs to, you know, lift buildings up and all this, I'm just like, bro, like, just, no, no, he's, he's Superman, he was Superman where before he had the cape and costume, he was Superman in spite of it all, and he is the Superman we need and deserve, and I just hope that WB comes to their senses and brings him back a lot sooner than later, you know? Yeah, but, you know, like, what really stole it for me was you know that scene in, in Man of Steel when he has to watch his own father die. Yeah. On the highway. Yeah. Like that. Like that's that puts so much uh, deepness into the character. Yeah. Like he wanted to go save um, his father, but his father had told him that he didn't want the world to see him for who he was because then he'd be judged and that like, he wasn't BVS. Like yep. Kevin Costner's character. Clark Kent was he was right you know look at Batman versus Superman what happened to him in the courtroom and all that yeah so that really it, it, that puts so much uh, emphasis on the character and when you when you when you, when you, when you say about people about Superman smiling my, my argument to that it always is well it, it's character development you know there was a slate made by Warner Brothers for Man of Steel Batman vs Superman Justice League Part 1 Justice League Part 2 there was four films there yeah yeah and it, character development so what's the point of him being happy-go-lucky Superman and Man of Steel? Where do you go from there? You know? So, if you... I think when he comes back in Zack's Club Justice League, he's a lot more optimistic. You know? I think we get the Superman that everyone's talking about when his journey gets to where it needs to be. There's right. no point of him being the happy Superman in Man of Steel and saving the day and everything's perfect and no challenges. We want to go see, see him go through this terrible journey and then to come out at the end of it with hope. And that shows a lot for people in, in real life. You go through bad stuff, you come out with a smile on your face after it all. It shows a lot about you as a character and a person. Yeah, for sure, for sure. 
I completely, completely agree. And, <clears throat> man, I'm just sitting here reminiscing on the scenes that, that he had as Superman. Like, I think the best, some of the best scenes of the many best scenes are the ones shared between he and his mother. Like, uh, that yeah. one in BVS when, when she tells him, you know, people are afraid of what they don't understand. And, you know, she says, you don't owe this world a thing. I mean, she's right, man. He's not from here. He's an alien. Yeah. And yeah. that shows how much of a Superman, ironically enough, he is. He chooses to stay and help. He chooses to fight and defend. He chooses to give his life for us, yeah. the people that didn't like him or don't want him here. Because it's the right thing to do and he wants to do the right thing. He genuinely wants to do the right thing. And I don't know why, I don't understand this complaint of he needs to be smiling or he needs to save more people. Like, critics be damn. Henry Cavill's Superman is just amazing and awesome. And he deserves so much more. He deserves better. Zack Snyder deserves better as well. Um, yeah, well, like, go ahead. see, like, even our own mothers and people's mothers, you always go to your mother for help, you know? Yeah. You always go to get some advice. And Superman's no different in the films. Like, he always goes back to his mother. And his mother tells him the truth. And his mother, of course, wants to protect him and doesn't want any harm towards him. Mm -hmm. And she tells him one way. And it's not like he goes against her. It's just he wants to help everyone. He's just, he's too good of a person. So if he did what she said to, you know, all this world of thing, he could just live as a farmer with her for the rest of his life. But he, he would, he'd never be content with himself, you know. He'd, he'd always want to help. And he'd feel like he was letting the world down even though he's not from here. So I love that aspect of the character too. Yeah, same, same, same. Brother Sean, man, uh, we're getting close to the uh, finishing line, man. Uh, again, thanks for uh, collaborating with me on this video, man. I really appreciate it. No problem. Um, <clears throat> what what are some ways aside from aside from the one you meant the ones you mentioned earlier that uh, you would suggest to a person that wants to hashtag release the Snyder Cut, but may be afraid or may not know how to. Well, it's, it's pretty simple. If you have a social media, you can use that. You know, you don't have to. You don't have to get permission out of anybody. You don't have to ask Zack Schneider. You don't have to <laughs> ask certain any any of the big pages. Mm -hmm. You can just post a picture of Superman, Batman, and just say hashtag release the Schneider cut. And also, if you were to join Twitter and set up a Twitter account, and if you just use the hashtag release the hashtag release the Schneider cut and said, "Hey, I'm a new member." Of, of this movement I want to meet new people with the same uh, interests I do there's loads of positive people on Twitter that will engage straight away and will follow you because you want you fight for the same thing that they do so like it's it's um, don't ever be afraid just enjoy it you know like it's a lot of, like myself and you uh, and you we have so much fun on Twitter don't we with the tweets and the posts and engaging with people it, it's a lot of fun at the same time right Right. Like we get to meet so many people. Like I got to meet you through the hashtag release the Schneider because you know exactly, exactly. Plus, all the other people I've got to have conversations with over DMs or who I've had phone calls with, and um, you know, like you get to meet so many, so many people, so many friends. Like maybe there's online friends, you might never meet them before in your uh, in your life, but it, it's um, it opens opens up a new world, and it's it's like I'm, I'm grateful to be part of the Shadow Cut movement it's very positive it gets many people like you to get to come on here like this is so much fun to be doing on a Sunday coming on a show like this you know so like, there's there's so many possibilities just just have fun and go with it exactly 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 man what's your uh, <clears throat> what's your message to hash the the members of the hashtag release the Snyder Cut movement man well just not everyone just stay positive because there's no because in this world we live in negativity outweighs positivity a lot you know yeah it's 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 kind of cool to be negative towards things and cool not to like things and cool to go against the system but we're fight like Warner Brothers are a, are a giant in the industry and I think the only way that we get the Schneider Cut is true positivity is true positivity towards all the cast even the Zachary Levi comments and stuff he was wrong in what he said but we have to be respectful in the way that we uh, justify going against we have to be respectful the way we uh, engage and say how he was wrong you know so just everyone needs to stay positive use the hashtag respectively um, work together and we get to do look how much we've achieved already like you know if you uh, you look at all the things we've done 
we don't do it individually we do it all together so just keep fighting I agree I agree and one more question man before uh, we close now <clears throat> around this time last year we were we were fed some very 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 disheartening and uh, upsetting news I remember the day myself because I was at work and I start once I realized that it was true and uh it was confirmed by the man himself I literally started feeling sick and wanted to leave um last year we found out that ben, it was in fact true that Ben Affleck will no longer don the cape as uh Bruce Wayne and Batman and uh we later found out that Robert Pattinson too which to his credit is also a very talented actor uh, yep. will be playing Batman in Matt Reeves' upcoming film titled The Batman. Um, talk to me about um, Bat Batman and BVS and Ben Affleck's portrayal of Bruce Wayne and Batman, man. Yeah, and I remember when it was first announced that Ben Affleck was going to be Batman, there was so much backlash. People hated the idea. Uh -huh. And I remember um, the late Josh, uh, John Schnepp, he worked at Collider before. Mm-hmm. He was one of the very few who said that it was a great casting and he was looking forward to seeing him. So, um, yeah, I, I was on board. I wasn't against it at all. And uh, then the first picture came out and I was hyped and the trailers came out and I thought it was going to be amazing and it was amazing and he was unbelievable. And then his little cameo on Suicide Squad was pretty cool too. Yeah. So, you know, like he embodied Batman. He was so big. He was so intimidating. His acting was brilliant, especially in that scene when... Um, you know, the courtroom blows up and he's looking at the, um, the TV and he's looking down at the letter and says, you let your family die. Yeah, he yeah. Doesn't say any words in that scene and his act unbelievable. You just see the anger behind his eyes. So, Ben Affleck to me is one of the best Batmans. I love Christian Bale's Batman too. Mm -hmm. um, ben Affleck is more the comic book Batman, you know? More the, the, the cool gadgets and the, just the complete uh, intimidation factor. But, um, yeah, I was when that news did come out last year. I didn't want to believe all the rumors for months and months because he is our Batman. He's my favorite Batman, and yeah, I was kind of like yourself. I was a bit sick. Yeah, yeah, man. Are you? Uh... And then he had to leave that. I think after that, I don't think things were ever right between himself and Warner Brothers. Um, because. A lot of people have said that that Ben Affleck script was the best ba uh, Batman film ever. Right. You know, um, Joe Mangalello, whatever you say his name, he was going to play as Deathstroke. He said it was a brilliant script. Jay Olivia, who has worked with Zack Snyder before and has written the, or has directed the Dark Knight Returns animated films, he said it was the best Batman script ever. So uh, I was so annoyed and upset as well. And then especially what they did in Justice League to really just make a show of him. I'd say Ben Affleck was kind of very annoyed at how he was depicted in Justice League because it really ruined ruined his character, you know? Yeah. And his art, yeah. his art between the five film plan yeah. was a lot bigger and a lot deeper than, uh, yeah. than, than Justice League, thankfully. Um, man, are you, <laughs> are you interested, what's, what's your thought on, uh, Matt Reeves, the Batman uh, as of right now, I, I mean, I think it has a solid cast. I, like I said, I, I know Robert Pattinson is a very talented actor. Uh, what, what's your thought on Matt Reeves, man, and the Batman? Yeah, well, funny enough, when Ben Affleck was out as Batman, my first choice to be Batman was Robert Pattinson. Oh, crazy. <laughs> he's who I wanted to be Batman because um, I've watched him since he's finished the Twilight films. A lot of people give him give him crap over the Twilight films like they were years ago he was only a kid when he did those films mm -hmm. and uh, you know so I, I've watched a lot of his independent films and indie films that he's done since then right like, like it's a good time and uh, I think it was called Legend of, of Z or something like that One on an Island and there's, there's a few other ones I've seen as well uh -huh. and he was brilliant in them. his acting has come along brilliantly and he's supposed to be unbelievable in the lighthouse as well I haven't seen it yet I'm going to see it now uh, next week mm -hmm. but uh, he was my first choice to replace Ben Affleck as Batman and it happened, you know, and uh, a, lot, a lot of backlash as well like that. But every casting gets backlash, and then they're all proven wrong when the film comes out. So um, I think he'll be great as Batman. But I, I the, like Matt Reeves is a brilliant filmmaker. I love the two uh, Planet of the Apes films he did. Right. 
love those films. I thought they were brilliant. Um, I haven't seen much of his other work though. But the thing is about the Batman film is we don't know. Is it going to be like Christian Bale's Batman, where his his fighting isn't the most important thing? It's more of his kind of detective stuff and more gadgets and the fight scenes aren't as good as they were in BVS. Or is he going to be like Batman and BVS and how he's supposed to be in Justice League, where he's intimidating and he's going through like John Wick style fight scenes? That's the kind of Batman I want to see. Right. Just takes on people and fights. I don't want a Batman film where it's two and a half, two hours of him barely in the suit, and then just 30, 30 minutes of him in the end taking on some villain, not really in a big showdown fight, just more like a psychological battle. I just want to see kind of more kind of action as a Batman, because that's what I was missing in all the other Batman films. Yeah. He's, he's BVS, and you look at that warehouse scene, he's like, this is Batman right here, this is how Batman should be. Taking down 20 guys on his own. Yeah. So... I'm looking forward to Matt Reeves' Batman. I've liked the films he's done. I think the cast is brilliant. Colin Farrell getting a lot of stick because he's going to be the Penguin. I think he's going to kill that. Uh, I think he's going to do very well in that role. But um, it's hard to know, isn't it, until we see that first trailer or we see how he looks in the bat suit. It's hard to know. Yeah. But definitely won't be boycotting the Batman because of what Warner Brothers have done. I'm definitely going to go see it because I, I love Batman, you know? Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Well, Brother Sean, man, we have reached the conclusion of the video, man. Again, thank you for stopping by, man, and we'll definitely have to collaborate sometime soon in the future. Um, do you mind if I leave a link to your YouTube channel in the description, man? Yeah, no problem. That'd be great. Thanks very much. Yes, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will leave a link to Sean's channel in the description. You guys go subscribe and follow him on his YouTube channel and Twitter, respectively. He's a very fierce, 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 fierce defender and tweeter of hashtag at least the Snyder Cut. And do not try him on Twitter because he will put you in your place and make you go good night, sleepy, sleepy, bye bye. And uh, subscribe, like, and comment to both of us. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all next time. Peace out. But before we go, ladies and gentlemen, we also, well, <laughs> we, well, Brother Sean also had some uh, things he wanted to share in regards to hashtag release the Snyder Cut as well. Uh, Brother Sean, go ahead, man. Yeah, well, <clears throat> if you're on Twitter or Vero or wherever you see it, Zack Snyder himself uh, is running an event for the 14th of February, of course, to symbolize the 214 runtime in minutes of, uh, of his Cup Justice League. He's running a, a poster event, so if you're only going to Photoshop or making posters and stuff, you can make a poster for his Justice League film, and you can send it send it to him, and he'll he'll he's going to judge every single one of the posters, and then by the 14th he's going to pick a winner, and the winner is going to get something from one of his films. So that's that's pretty cool. That's probably one of the, the coolest events that's been going on because this one is run by Zack Snyder himself. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, like what? Like even if your your poster is uh, isn't the best, or it's uh, it looks like a five year old made it, he's still going to look at it and judge it. You know, <laughs> so uh, Josh, get your crayons out and have a go. You know, <laughs> so uh, yeah, he, the man himself is going to judge it. So that's a really cool event, and it's run by him. So support that definitely. I think the Instagram pages are just as league posters, and then the Vero page is the same. So go follow, uh, go follow that, and then like I, I'm not involved with it or anything. I'm just giving it a shout out, but. There's people there involved with it. If you got in contact with them, they tell you everything you need to know about it. Mm -hmm. But also, um, I think Lisa Schneider Cup we're talking about. They're doing a, an, a, an event coming up as well. They didn't say what it was yet, but it's going to be after the Justice League posters. So that's so, that's another event to get excited for. And then there is the there's a there's a release the air cut event going on as well on February eighth. I think. Did mm -hmm. you hear about that? Yeah, it's, it's sometimes in February. I retweeted it, but I haven't really uh, looked at it. But I'm sure it'll, since I have so many mutuals, I'm sure it'll come back, come up about. But yeah, yeah we're going to be doing an air cut uh, hashtag uh, throwdown as well. Yeah, so I haven't really looked too much into that yet, but I definitely will. But uh, that's going to be something as well. But then uh, SchneiderCut.com are organizing an event for the 30th of January. Mm -hmm. which will mark the ninth year anniversary of Henry Cavill being announced as Superman. So what they're doing is they got in contact with a lot of the Instagram pages and Facebook pages of uh, Schneider Cut, of people who just have Schneider Cut accounts. 
but they also got in contact with some big DC pages who just post about not, not only the Shannon Cup but post about DC in general and they have a big following so what the event is on the 30th is on your Facebook or on your Twitter or on your Vero or whatever you want or YouTube or do all of them you just post a, a 30 second video saying why you love Henry Cavill as Superman and how much you want to see his next chapter after Batman vs Superman which is just League that wasn't released by the Zack Snyder one mm-hmm. so you just tell you just you just in the 30 second video tell how much you love him and why you want to see him again as Superman and um, the hashtag you use is hashtag he has yet to rise which of course Zack has said that on his Vero when he posts a picture about Superman and again use the hashtag release the Schneider cut because um, that's one of the main hashtags but the reason I think it's called the He Is Yet To Rise campaign. I think they were they wanted to do a different hashtag for it because a lot of people might have hashtag release Snyder Cut blocked, you know, because some people don't want to see it that much. So I can get past people who have it blocked or don't want to hear it about release the Snyder Cut, then they can hear what the event that was. So I think it's a pretty cool event as well, to show how much to Henry Cavill, how much we love him, you know, because a lot of people got angry at his comments a few months ago about... Um, Schneider Cup when he was promoting The Witcher, so right. I think this is a this is a good way to be positive towards him, and like it doesn't have to be this massive thing, but his agents or his agent will definitely see it, and his people will definitely see it because they'll always because these big celebrities when something is trending about them or something is being said about them, their agents know they know about it, you know, so he'll he'll hopefully hear about it, but his agent will definitely know about it, so it's a good way to show support for Henry Cavill and Superman. I completely agree. And again, ladies and gentlemen, whether you're young, old, boy, girl, or anything in between, you too can play a part and uh, contribute to these events as well. Whether that be the Aya Cut, whether that be Henry Cavill, whether that be the Snyder Cut, or whether it's hopefully all of three, you, whoever you are listening, can play a part and play a role in this as well. And uh, don't be afraid to step in and don't be afraid to ask for help if you don't know how. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that'll be all for this video. We'll see you all next time. Peace. And don't get triggered.